The awesome F100 has a name that immediately sets high expectations, but does it live up to its name? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Ash from Droning On. In order to bring product reviews to you, our channel needs to grow. So please support us by giving the video a thumbs up, click subscribe and hit that small bell icon to see our reviews first. Finally, whilst you're watching, comment below with your thoughts, questions or feedback. So here we have what is apparently a really awesome little mini brushless quadcopter. It's called the Awesome 100 and this one's come to us from Gearbest. Now it prices at just over $100 and there are only two receiver options which are to have it with an FR Sky receiver or PMP which is basically plug and play. In other words, connect your own receiver. We've got the FR Sky version here and if I can get it out of the box, I'm going to unbox it for you. <laughs> Uh, but it's proven to be a little bit stubborn, but okay, here we go, yay! So inside the box we've got a manual first of all, I say manual, it's two pages and it's very very brief, but uh, it's pretty much the same process of all of these quads anyway. So we'll just have a quick look at the accessories, we've got some spare props, we've got, uh, let's have a look, eight in total, but of course you're going to use four of them to fit the quad because it doesn't come with props. We've got some tiny little prop guards, they're so cute. Uh, so that's gonna be useful for flying inside and of course with a 100 class quadcopter, which is what this is, it's actually quite practical to fly these indoors. It is actually doable. We've also got a battery and that is a chunky little LiPo. It's actually a 2S, so a 7.4 volt 500 milliamp. Uh, this is a 25C one and we're probably gonna need that because this is a brushless quad with quite a bit of power. On the ends of that, we've got a balance cable, which is good to see, and then there's a JST connector. I'm not a fan of those, but they're easy and cheap, so. And then finally, we've got some screws, probably for the prop guards, and also an elastic band, which might be for, yeah, it's a spare elastic band for keeping the battery in place. Anyway, let's have a look at the quad. So it's presented quite nicely in this box and I do notice over time as these micro quads arrive the presentation does get better and better and wow this is a really unique looking quad. Now when I heard that this was called the Awesome 100 I thought wow that's a little bit arrogant calling it awesome when it might actually be rubbish but this does look really really cool. It's got this lovely carbon fibre frame which is the core element here that looks like 2 mil carbon uh, and then we've also got a carbon fibre plate uh, surrounding the camera that looks to be probably 1 mil. But it's also joined by this lovely aluminium finish on this frame and that of course is going to give this a little bit extra rigidity and strength so that if you do crash it you're not going to be damaging so many components. Now despite all of the extra weight on here the quad only weighs 50 grams which is super lightweight especially for a brushless quad as well. So in the center here the center stack we've got an F3 omnibus flight controller now it's got an integrated on-screen display and also an integrated VTX. You can see the USB port there for programming it and it's a really really compact neat little assembly inside there very very compact. Below that is a board for the speed controllers, it's a 4-in-1 BL Heli support and it also supports D-Shot 600. Has a maximum capacity of a 3S battery but supports only 12 amps burst so be very careful if you are going to connect a 3S to this quad just so you don't want to go popping that speed controller board. Now tucked inside there just at the top you can also see the FR Sky receiver. It's not a diversity receiver, the one that comes bundled with it but of course this is a micro quad, you're not going to be flying very far with this so that's probably going to be more than adequate but you could easily get an XM plus in there or something similar if you really do want diversity. On the ends of the arms we've got some really cute little brushless motors here these are 1103 7300 kV so very fast spinning motors and they are just microscopic it's incredible how they can design them so small and then of course onto those we've got the props bundled which are 2035 uh, so two inch four bladed props. The 2 inch and 3 inch uh, market is really really popular right now and I think these are going to be more common in the marketplace. 
Looking at the front, we've got a little 600 TVL camera. It's a CMOS camera as well. And connected to that is a 5.8 gig 48 channel VTX, which unfortunately is only 25 milliwatts. Uh, and you can see the tiny little whip antenna on the rear here. Now what I do actually like about these is they're far more durable and actually the signal's not always so bad from them, but I prefer them to the circular antennas on these micro quads, largely because these withstand a crash far better than the mini circular ones. So we'll see what the reception is like on this when we test fly it. It's also quite nice the way they've twisted the wires from the motors, that can help to reduce noise apparently, but that's very, very neat. And also the motors are actually plugged into the flight controller via tiny, tiny little plugs in here. So if you do happen to break or pop one of these motors, they're gonna be very, very easy to replace. Now the camera is at a, a tilt of what looks to be about 20 degrees. There are two screws on either side and so slackening those off a little bit might allow the camera to tilt up and down. Looking at the rear, there are two tiny little LEDs here as well, so they're gonna look quite nice when it's flying. Looking at the underside of the quad, it's all very basic. We've got nothing exposed under here, which I really like. No speed controllers or wires or anything. So the underside is completely protected. But just to also give a nice little feature, we've got these lovely little guards, so landing feet. Now they, just to warn you, are gonna snap very, very quickly. They're very brittle and very, very bendy, as I can feel there, but they are gonna snap. But they're a nice feature. You unfortunately don't get any spares, so you may find yourself simply removing those over time time. So in summary, that is a really beautifully made quad. It looks very, very nice. The only thing that seems to be missing is a buzzer. Now, why do they produce beautiful quadcopters like this and not put a lost buzzer alarm on it? Really, really irritating, but hopefully the flight controller on here, which is an Omnibus F3, has capacity for a buzzer to be added to that board. But what a shame. Anyway, we're gonna now bind this with our transmitter. We'll have a quick look at the config, and then it's time to test fly it. So of course the next thing to do is bind the little Awesome 100 with our Tyrannis. I've got the FR Sky version, and so here is my X9D. Turn this on first. Hi Ash, I'm ready to go. I really need to get rid yeah, of that voice. <laughs> um, I'm going to create a new model on here first. So I'm going to do that by going down to my model memory, going to press enter on there, create a new model. And then we're going to follow the wizard to set it to quadcopter. Page through the rest of the setup there and leave it as it is for now and then press enter to confirm that. So that's all done, we've got our new model. I'll give it a proper name later, but for now it's known as model 12. So the receiver inside here is tiny. The best thing to do is remove the four screws that secure the top carbon fiber plate, and then you can remove it and gain full access to the receiver. It is indeed an FR Sky XM receiver, and it's tiny. So I actually found I had to cut away the heat shrink as well around mine because it was actually intruding on the button that you use to bind. And it's a bit silly that the button's hidden behind this QR code. So what we're gonna do is put the quadcopter into bind mode, and we're gonna do that by half attaching the battery, but not actually giving power to the quad yet. This is quite a fiddly process if it's just one of you doing it on your own. But what I find to do is put it in half like that, press and hold the bind button on the receiver until you feel it click, and then attach power to the quad. It will all boot up and you'll know if the receiver is in bind mode because you'll get a red and a green light illuminated at the same time on the receiver. We're now gonna get the transmitter ready for binding. So back onto the transmitter, we've got our new model created. We're gonna just make a few more adjustments. So first thing you need to do, go to the configuration page for the model and go right to the bottom and make sure that you've got it set to mode D16 and also make sure you've got channel range one to 16 as well. Once you've done that, you can click bind, which will bind it with the quad. Now, if I just bring the quad into view as well, so you see at the moment on the receiver, we have a green and a red light. As soon as I hit bind, it will start chirping and those lights should change. There we go. Now the flashing red light on the receiver means we've bound it successfully and we can turn it all off and then we'll be connected once we turn it all back on. We're just gonna make one more change, which is to go to the mixers page down here and we're gonna configure our additional inputs. Now I'm gonna configure three switches on here, one for my lost model alarm, one for my flight mode and one for my arm and disarm switch. So I'm gonna make channel five my arm and disarm switch. So press enter on that one and then just press down to the source, 
hit enter and toggle the switch you want to use for arm and disarm. Then press exit. And we're gonna do a similar thing again with channel six and seven. I'm gonna make six my mode selection switch. So I'm gonna press enter onto that. Go down to source, press enter again and toggle the button you want to use for mode. And then finally, same again for channel seven. This is gonna be my lost model alarm. Go down to source, toggle the buttons there. And that is it. So we are now successfully bound. What we're gonna do now is go into beta flight and have a look at the configuration and also the version that it ships with. So now a quick look at the beta flight setup on this quad. So I've got the battery connected to the quad and I've also removed the props and that's a very important step. So first of all, obviously I'm gonna plug it into the USB port so that we can access it and then click connect. I've also got the transmitter turned on and of course it's already bound to the receiver installed within the drone. So first of all, accelerometer is all working fine. I did actually test that on a level surface earlier and it doesn't need recalibrating so I'm going to leave that as it is. Now one thing I did observe is that the XM receiver inside this quad is not actually set up. So first thing you need to do is go to the configuration tab, scroll down a little bit and set the receiver to serial based and then set the receiver provider to SBUS. Once you've done that, save and reboot. And then of course, reconnect to the quad. And then what we're gonna do is go to the ports tab and set the UART3 to serial RX on, then click save and reboot. And just to note, some of these settings you might have to apply twice because sometimes they don't save properly in beta flight for some reason. So then we'll reconnect and hopefully when we then look at the receiver tab, the, there you go, the inputs from our transmitter are now recognized. So all of our auxiliary channels are also working perfectly as well. So that's great. The next thing to check, of course, is the channel map, which at the moment is wrong. So we need to change this to the Tyrannis channel map, which is T-A-E-R. Then hit save. That will remap the channels and hopefully they'll all match to your transmitter, but always check just to be sure they all look perfect. Now we've clearly got an issue with RX range here. Our endpoints are not very clean. There is a document that I've written, a guide on how to fix that. Uh, if you click the link on the screen that you see now, follow that guide and that will get those set perfectly. So very quick look at configuration. Now it also defaults to one shot 125. This quad does support D shot 600. So we're gonna set that option as well. And we're going to give it a quick craft name. We're gonna call it the awesome 100. And the other thing I noticed as well is that the LED strip for some reason is disabled. So the LED lights on the rear weren't illuminating. So I've set that to on. I'm gonna leave air mode not permanently enabled because I, I prefer to toggle that on and off with the mode switch. Click save and reboot. And the first thing you'll notice is that once it reboots, the LEDs light up and they look lovely. So we're gonna leave all of the PID settings on their stock settings. We're gonna fly this exactly as it arrives from the factory. You can of course tune those yourself later. Next thing we'll do is set the mode. So first of all, our arm switch, we're gonna have on aux one. So slide the sliders up to the top like that. There we go. Next, we're gonna add air mode. So we're gonna put mo air mode onto the same switch that we're gonna put our flight modes on. And I only want air mode to toggle when it's on the horizon and rate mode. So I'm gonna leave that set like that. Next, angle mode. Now I don't particularly fly very often with these modes, but I'm gonna leave them configured anyway. I just like to have them there just in case. So angle mode, I'm gonna set on auxiliary two. Then I'm gonna have horizon mode also on auxiliary two in the mid stick position, mid switch position. And then of course rate mode will be unallocated. So it will look like that. So we've now got that configured quite nicely. So sadly, there is no buzzer on this model, so we can't configure that, but I am gonna add a switch for the on-screen display. I'm gonna put that on the switch that I would normally use for my buzzer, just so I can toggle the OSD on and off in case I don't fancy it being visible at the time. Hit save, and we are now all set up. Of course, because we've got D-Shot, we don't need to calibrate the speed controllers. The on-screen display I'll mess around with later, but I'll leave that on its defaults for now, and I think we're basically ready for the test flight. 
Now I can't even start to describe how cold it is out here today in England. I mean at least it's sunny and we've got a blue sky but I am freezing. In fact, even tempted to zip up my coat, that's how cold it is. But we've got the little awesome F100 here plugged in the battery underneath. Now I would recommend, it's not very good the battery securing mechanism that comes with it, so I would recommend putting something else around that, maybe a, a Velcro strap. But anyway, transmitter's on, let's plug in the quad. I've got two batteries with me today, so we'll do a quick line of sight test and then we'll do some FPV as well, of course. So I've actually got another little battery, which is another 500. Uh, this one's actually a 30C, which is probably more suited to this little thing. But anyway, let's see how it goes. So beautiful sunny day, at least. Let's get on with the flight test. So I'm in stabilized mode at the moment and let's get up. Whee! <laughs> so we're in the air. I do love these little micro quads. Flight time will be interesting on this. Uh, we'll have a look at that later on. So we're in the hover, lovely stable little quad. Very, very, very quiet. Very, very quiet. Um, probably because of those nice, efficient props. Uh, a bit, quite a bit of wind coming in today, so you can see them at quite an angle to keep it in the hover at the moment. But looks nice. Right, let's go for the punch. I'm going to do that into wind just to make it a bit easier. So here we go. Three, two, one. Okay. Ah, it's not. It's not incredible. <laughs> <laughs> but no prop wash on the way down. So the pids are obviously tuned quite nicely. Descends really smoothly. Yeah, not incredible. Uh, acro's nice. Very tidy, yeah. Very, very smooth. Flies really, really nicely. There's a line of sight quad flies very nice. So let's do a bit of a speed run around. In fact, no, we'll just check the yaw rate before we do that. Wow, that's quick. <laughs> yeah, that's really, really quick. It's a very, very quick yaw rate on this from the factory. No beeper, remember, so I've got to be careful with this. I don't want to lose it because I'll probably never find it. Um, I've checked the failsafe as well. Failsafe cuts the props. It is set to fall in beta flight, so that's good. So, a bit of a fly around. I mean, although the punch isn't particularly impressive, wow, it is quick. Yeah, it's really quick. So, surprising really that it doesn't have a lot of power to punch out, and yet its actual flying speed Oh yeah, okay. Not quite enough power on the throttle there. So if you are in trouble, do you have a bit of problem trying to get this one out of trouble because it doesn't have a lot of um, that punch power which you need to get you above the ground when you're dropping a bit too low. But still, oh, had a weird little flip of death there. And you can see in this grass, even now, I'm struggling to see it, but there it is. Uh, okay, that was an odd little flip. So on the basis that that last battery was a little bit flat, we'll just give it another quick punch test. Oh yeah, plenty more power now. Well, I say plenty more, a bit more. <laughs> but probably just that little bit extra that we needed just to get it out of problems when it has one. So another punch test. Awesome, F100. Are you awesome? <laughs> yeah, it's not bad actually. <laughs> okay, so that is much better really much better. So very quick zoom around. Yes, now it's got the punch that it needed before. Flies very, very nice this. Right, so I don't want to use up too much power. So what we'll do is get this onto FPV mode and get that flight test done. So the camera looks nice and bright, the colours look really good as well, possibly needs a little bit of a tune in terms of the focus, but you can see the on-screen display there looking nice as well. Now I've only got this one battery unfortunately, so this isn't going to be a particularly long FPV flight test, but we'll see how it goes. But yeah, nice looking picture there. So let's take off, we'll go into acro mode as well. Here we go. 
And let's do some little laps around these trees here. So the range on this VTX is not particularly good at all. I mean, I was getting break up already just down, you know, barely 20 meters away. But this flies really, really nicely. And you can hear it whirring away. Sounds lovely. Rolls very nicely as well. See, I think that dipole antenna is really showing its weakness actually. And I've had far better results on other quads, but yeah, this one <clears throat> is not particularly good. I'm losing signal all the time. In fact, I can barely fly 50 meters away, barely even 30 meters away in fact, which is really frustrating because this is such a great performing quad, but it definitely needs a different antenna. What a shame. Uh, I'm actually low on battery as well, so I'm gonna have to land. Um, so in general, quite a nice quad, very, very nicely built, really nice features on it, apart from the missing buzzer and also the dipole antenna is not very good at all. Uh, and of course, this is only 25 milliwatts as well, so it doesn't have a lot of power to start with anyway. Uh, but it flies brilliantly and it's such a shame that such a lovely quad is let down by that because it, you know, it has such potential there. Uh, but yeah, I'll put some positives and negatives up on the screen now. Have a look at those. For the price of it, I think there are better brushless micro quads out there. But if you do want a really nice flying quad that could perhaps be uprated with the assistance of a different antenna and perhaps a different VTX, then this could be the one for you. Awesome, eh, not sure if it is so awesome, but I'll leave that decision with you. Thanks very much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, comment below, and of course, give us a thumbs up.